presentation. Thank you for this invitation, personally you, because I consider it as an honor. And today I would like to share with you our own, my own investigation in this field and investigation of Russia, results of investigation of Russia. And the title of my presentation, as a professor Ziev told us previously, the most promising data of using progestogens among women with endometriosis and fertility. Um, endometriosis is highly prevalent around the world and it affects one in 10 women. So approximately 190 million uh, women of reproductive age in the world suffer from endometriosis. Uh, furthermore, based on Italian investigation, it estimated that approximately 6 and 10 cases of endometriosis remain undiagnosed. Many women suffering from infertility have endometriosis, and the prevalence of endometriosis is high in women just suffering from infertility with or without different kind of pelvic pain. Endometriosis today is considered as a disease for, for the whole life. So the main issue of our of treatment of endometriosis, it's not only to help women with, who suffer from the pain or who suffer from the infertility associated with endometriosis, but to avoid unnecessary surgery. Uh, surgery. And we know that we can expect a lot of repeating surgery uh, after the first one, if we uh, don't prescribe the special medical treatment. But in the same case, in the same um, point, I uh, would like to uh, uh, stress that it's necessary to remember that we don't know when we could expect the recurrences of endometriosis after surgery and when not. Uh, so that's why we need to prescribe a medical treatment for all women after surgery aiming at avoiding any kind of recurrences. And uh, one of uh, the uh, problem which arise uh, not a long time before, uh, there is no evidence that pregnancy can help to reduce the pain associated with endometriosis. Treatment of endometriosis associated infertility sometimes could uh, have a lot of problems because many treatment, many uh, medicaments which we use to uh, suppress the uh, endometriosis associated pain uh, could have unpleasant side effects including wet gain, mood swings and erratic period. Uh, so sometimes our patient could stop treatment because and at the same time that they don't tell us about this stop uh, stopping because they suffer from different kind of side effects. We are patiently uh, waiting, we are patiently waiting now the absolutely new guidelines of ASHRA which we can uh, get at the end of this year. But regarding the last guidelines uh, which we use widely now, uh, which uh, mm, was written, written uh, at 2014, was published in uh, 2014, and uh, actually recommend us that in infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe formal treatment so for suppression of ovarian function to improve infertility. And not all progestogens are optimal for women seeking pregnancy. In this field, the diadrogesterone could uh, have a lot of advantages in comparison of with other progestogens. In comparison uh, with uh, diagest, diagest, for example, we cannot use the last one in patients who suffer from pain and infertility at the same time. But diagesterone could be useful not only to suppress the pain associated with endometriosis, but could help also uh, women who uh, suffer from infertility at the same time.
And we, it's well believed that didogesterone can inhibit the development of endometriotic lesion. Uh, didogesterone could reduce the expression of transcription factors and growth factors involved in the establishment of and maintenance of endometriotic lesions. You can see on this picture the scheme of this uh, suppression of endometriosis. And let me switch gears to the pharmacological management sorry, uh, of endometriosis Russian approach. In Russia, today, more than 3 million of women suffer from endometriosis. And that the start of the treatment of management of treatment of endometriosis among women who suffer from it, we consider usually not only age and reproductive motivation, but also a clinical manifestation. And today, we published at the beginning of this year absolutely new Russian guidelines, which mentions progestogens as a first-line therapy for endometriosis. And only in case of treatment failure, we consider agonist and antagonist of gonadotropin releasing hormone as a second-line treatment. And regarding the com combined oral contraceptive, uh, we use it only in this women, with women who uh, suffer from endometriosis, but not of deep infiltrating endometriosis, e, uh, who ask us about the such kind of contraception. Diadrogesterone we consider as a first-line therapy of medical treatment of endometriosis in the, is at the same level as Dianagest. Uh, we now rethinking, or may, we now maybe uh, have a renaissance, so-called renaissance of Dianagesterone, who was created uh, more than 60 years ago in the world, uh, like a, uh, one of the drug, of the main drug for the endometriosis and the problem with associated with such disease. Unlike other progestogens, uh, didogesterone does not suppress ovarian function uh, when it's given uh, at therapeutic doses. And you can see the results of different kind of investigation that uh, shows out that uh, we can expect the pregnancy rate improvement when we use didogesterone after uh, surgery or without surgery. Digesterone offers a, a possibility uh, of uh, the pregnancy during the treatment of endometriosis associated pain. An orchidea study has shown that digesterone allow uh, pregnancy possibility not only in regime of from the 5 to 25 days of menstrual cycle, but also in continuous regime. And when we use both uh, 20 or 2 doses, 20 or 2 milligrams per day of digesterone. The aim of orchidea study was to uh, check the um, uh, relief of uh, pain, but we follow after uh, our patient during six months. It's the main uh, aim of study. And we involved 350 patient women who suffer of, of, of endometriosis and uh, their reproductive age. Orchidea primary underpoint efficacy underpoint demonstrated improvement, a significant a deduction in chronic uh, pelvic pain, especially not uh, after three months, but at six months of using. A secondary underpoint of orchidea study demonstrated an improvement uh, of uh, symptoms of endometriosis in chronic pelvic pain, in dysmenorrhea, and dysparionia. And you can see uh, the main results we got uh, after the six months of treatment. Regarding the reduction of the number of days with using of analgetics, you can see also at the end of our uh, investigation we uh, get the quite good results regarding the uh, reduction of using of uh, days of um, analgetics. And at the same time, we um, 
investigate not only the primary, secondary, and the point in reducing of a different kinds of pain associated with endometriosis, but also we value the value to the uh, different kind of uh, mental health or uh, pay, uh, physical function role function and social function and we came to the decision that the treatment with digesterone led to the significant improvements in all kind of this function and mental health Digesterone was well tolerated. It's very important because I told previously that a lot of drugs which we widely use in endometriosis can sometimes lead to a different kind of side effects. In this case, our patients could interrupt the treatment and we can expect the recurrences of endometriosis. That's why we pay a lot of attention to this point uh, that the digesterone is well tolerated. And during our study, only 3.1% have a mild um, problem with health and mild problem of uh, problem uh, with the, uh, they suffer from the uh, different kind of menstrual, not heavy menstrual bleeding. But uh, our patient which discontinue the treatment uh, of didogesterone, uh, the very main matter of it was that they became, they got pregnant pregnancy. So even if our patient had different kind of menstrual not heavy bleeding, they did not stop the treatment and continue the treatment with digesterone. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to uh, share with you some, uh, some uh, takeaway message. Medical treatment of endometriosis should always aim to manage pain and other symptoms, if possible, not to prevent fertility. Digesterone does not suppress the ovulation, can inhibit the endometriotic lesions. The Orchidea Digesterone study showed marked improvements in chronic pelvic pain, severity of dysmenorrhea, requirement of analgetic and quality of life. The Orchidea Digesterone study also confirmed a favorable safety profile of digesterone, not serious adverse drug reaction was reported during this study. And in some of our clinical centers, which uh, pay a lot of attention just to the women with endometriosis, we continue the using of digesterone even when we stop the orchidea study. And one of these uh, investigations was published this year in Russia, and there in, uh, Scientific uh, scientists came to the decision that they also uh, check the good tolerance of digesterone even if our women continue to use it more than one year. And digesterone allows clinicians to personalize endometriosis therapy dependent on the current needs of the patient. And I would like to stress that we published the results of Orchidea study not only in Russian, widely published in Russia, but we also this year published this, uh, the results of this investigation and fertility sterility, and it will be available at the uh, end of September. When I uh, told you about the different kind of regimes and pers personalization of therapy of digesterone, I meant uh, that the treatment of endometriosis associated pain could consider the digesterone 220 milligrams free. Uh, two, three times a day from five to 25 days of menstrual cycle or in continuous regime. But at the same time, we can use also digesterone for the women who suffer from endometriosis associated infertility, uh, 10 milligrams from 14 to 25 days of menstrual cycle. And what about the futures? Uh, what is the solution for us for the future? Not in the field of endometriosis, but in the field of medicine uh, as whole. Well. 
in whole. And, uh, I think that we should switch gears from the generalized medicine, which considers only the same risk, same dose, and same response, to personalized medicine, which can identify the different risk, different doses, and different response. And I think that the digesterone in this field could be very useful in different kinds of problems which could associate it with endometriosis. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to quote uh, uh, the words of Sidney Burwell, who wrote it a long time ago. And today, uh, these words is uh, very uh, suitable, not only to uh, the medicine and in general, but uh, to our rethinking of endometriosis and the role of digesterone in the endometriosis associated infertility and also endometriosis associated pain. Half of what I is taught as a medical student, you know, 10 years have been shown wrong. And the trouble is none of your teachers know which half. Thank you.